I'm very uncomfortable. Hey everybody, I am- I don't know, I'm just- everybody's in quarantine and I'm bored. So today I want to talk about The Last Exorcism. It's a movie from 2010, so it's turning a decade old this year, which is awesome. We love that. Anyway, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do know that I came up with rules for a fun little drinking game that you can play while you watch horror movies. The rules are simple. Um, if an ancient text rhymes in English, if there's an evil child. An inverted cross used to represent Satan or some other sort of devil or evil entity. Instead of, you know, the actual satanic cross, I'm very tired of the Petrine cross, which is the cross of St. Peter, which is the inverted cross being used to represent the devil. If a local college professor is an expert in this exact thing specifically to dump exposition on the audience. In a similar vein, if there is any verbal, in-depth explanation of whatever is happening and how to defeat it. A fake-out jump scare. Any and every jump scare that's really just the protagonist's friend jumping out of a closet or whatever. I hate those. Spooky thing only shown for the audience. So the characters don't see the ghost walking by in the background, that's just for us. It's dumb. Stop. Don't do that. Drink. Um, explicit sexual content. Sequel bait. Blatant references to horror classics. Um, if the trailer was misleading, the last four are just thoughts that you have and that y y yeah. Um, those are definitely not teenagers. This is not how teenagers act. Literally nobody would ever do that. This detail went nowhere and is never mentioned again. So those are all the rules. I'll put those in the description below if you want to play along with me or if you want to play on your own. I'm drinking tea. It's going to be a good time. The movie opens with Cotton Marcus. He's a disillusioned evangelical preacher. His father was a preacher and he started preaching when he was a very young child. You know, claimed to perform miracles and heal people and very Jesus camp. E, if you've ever seen Jesus Camp. In Jesus' name, do not let Satan get you off what God has for you. And we are a generation that needs to rise up. Yeah, his name is very similar to Cotton Mather. I don't know if that was intentional or if they were just looking for like a weird evangelical preacher sounding name. So this is a found footage film. Um, it's more of a mockumentary than anything. It's not, oh, there's spooky stuff happening so I'm going to record all of it, a la Paranormal Activity. The goal here is to expose this um, exorcist's predatory behavior um, because he just, he doesn't believe it anymore. Um, it's a con, is what it is, at least at first. Love Patrick Baby and his cotton. He's He's just so, um, like, real. Do you know if you take two ripe bananas, you put them in a bowl, and you put some sugar, and you go ahead and bake it for 400, you can go ahead and pull it out and have yourself banana bread, hallelujah! hallelujah! You know, he's not acting just like a, like a holy robot. Everybody is very believable. It feels really natural. There's this really cute moment where, um, the girl, Nell, who is claiming to be possessed, um, she tells the boom operator from the documentary crew that um, she really likes her boots. She has on these like red Doc Martens and Nell tells her that she really likes them. So the girl literally takes off her boots and gives them to Nell. It was just like a really sweet moment and I'm pretty sure that for the rest of the movie we don't see Nell without those boots on. Okay, so after all that stuff, um, Cotton says that she is possessed by this demon called Abalam. Oh, I'm getting it. And Abalam is, you know, this really sexual demon that preys on young females and, you know, blah blah blah, all that stuff. This first exorcism scene where, you know, the bed is shaking, it almost plays like an episode of The Office in a weird way. 
So there's a scene where she's like stripping and acting extremely sexual. And watching it for the first time, it's a little weird because, you know, you can't help but think, did he actually diagnose her correctly? Like, why is she suddenly acting this way? There's a scene with a bathtub and a baby doll, and for some reason there's like scary music. It doesn't appear to be diegetic. I feel like in a found footage movie, pretty much all the sounds should be diegetic. What? Uh, they found out that she was pregnant, and I think the dad did it. And so then Cotton and the film crew start to believe that Nell really genuinely is possessed. They're out in the barn. Um, the interesting thing here is that the actress who plays Nell um, is actually a contortionist in real life. She can do this. She's acting really sexual again. And um, she um, offers him a blowing job. That is um, incorrect. Why wouldn't a demon know when he deduces that she's not actually possessed? Nell admits that she had lied, that she did in fact have sex with some boy. And then they talk to the kid, find out that um, no, no, he never slept with her, he's gay, Cotton does not know when to leave well enough alone. So they turn around, they go back, you know, the, the walls and the ceilings are covered in symbols that have been um, drawn in blood. While they include the Petrine cross, most of them are actually accurate from what I can tell. There's this weird satanic thing happening, Nell's pregnancy was, I guess, the Antichrist. Just the last 10 minutes, you're like floored because there's so much happening all at once. Wow. Okay, that's the direction we're going now. Cool. I don't think they're worse off for it, especially for like a found footage movie. It's, it's really well done and it feels satisfying or as satisfying as it can feel when it ends with everybody dead. So yeah. I don't really have an ending here. I think I'm gonna take a nap. Anyway, drop a like if you liked this. I don't see why you would. Hopefully as time goes on I will learn how to not be awful at this. Next week, or maybe two weeks from now, um, I will have a new video for you guys to watch. Who knows? I don't. Cheers. Frick. I love this. Oh god. You drink. I don't know what I'm referring to there, but I'll figure it out later. I don't no, I need to be drunk for that. That's wrong. So, I'm not sure how to feel about that.